the skin is, is pretty much says up there. It's uh, strong yet flexible, and it's a big covering of our body, as I said. And now on to the subcutaneous. Or, um, I just went to mine. The epi epidermis is a, an outermost layer of skin. It's made of um, stratified squamous epi or, yeah, stratified squamous epithelial tissue. It lacks blood vessels, so it depends on the dermis for all of its blood vessels and all of its nutrients and waste take away. And um, it rests on the basement membrane. Um, the deep layer layers, um, the stratum basal, and that's where the cells are divided, and, and that's where the um, um, melanocytes lie, and that's where your skin gets its pig pigment, which is the melanin production, and it's the outer layer of your skin that, that we see, it flakes off, and it has um, fully keratinized. And the um, and the um, epidermis is for protection. It shields the underlying lying skin. It um, keeps in the moisture. It protects against pathogens and waterproof. Oops. How do we go back? <laughs> There's a picture of all the layers of skin, and as you can see, the, um, <laughs> the, the epidermis does not have any blood vessels, and it lies on the face of the membrane where all the um, blood vessels and nutrients, um, that's where it gets everything from. And what determines your skin color? Um, it's genetics, the amount of melanin, um, the size of the melanin gland, or the lack of melanin, and you can also get it from environmental factors like sunlight, um, UV lamps, or painting beds, or x-rays. We're going to skip the dermis because these people kind of just drifted away on us. So as I told our instructor earlier, may God have mercy on our soul. I'm going to jump into the subcutaneous layer here. Pretty much, we have the definition and the purpose of it up there. The subcutaneous layer are masses of areolar and adipose fat tissue. They house larger blood vessels, nerves, and fibers, and they run along the surface in every direction. They're also known, it's also known as the hypodermis. The subcutaneous layer is not really a layer of skin, but it's rather a layer that attaches the actual skin to everything beneath that layer. Therefore, there are no boundaries that separates the dermis from the subcutaneous layer. Some more information on it is the major blood vessels that supply the skin are also found in this layer. The actual size of the subcutaneous layer varies from one person to another due to the fact that some of us carry more body fat than others. And regardless of our size and our shape, a person will always have a subcutaneous layer on them no matter what. And for a better understanding of how the subcutaneous layer works, envision this right here. <coughs> think of a flower bed and then think of how you have that sandy layer of foundation in the flower bed. And now how the sandy flower bed allows for your drainage. In retrospect, if you think about it, your blood vessels in the subcutaneous layer, they drain and feed the capillaries of your dermis, and this is very similar to the sand that's in the flower box. That is awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you very much.